Welcome to another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me as always is new Mike L. Kevin Jack. I'm here and I'm excited to talk about the Martian version of Michael Mann's film Manhunter. Nah, this this isn't what this is at all. But we are reading oh. Martian Manhunter, issue two from, I believe, 1988. Sounds right. Yep, yeah. that sounds right. Yeah. Now, uh, what, what's your experience with Martian Manhunter, Jack? <laughs> oh, it goes back so very, very long. Uh, I mean, he's one of those guys I definitely, you know, I've seen him in things. Yeah. Uh, seen him on cartoons. The first couple seasons. Right. Yeah, the cartoon show. He was, he was good in there. Um, I think he briefly popped up in at least one cut of the Justice League movie. <laughs> I don't even oh, really? Which, one's which at this point. Uh, probably the, the four hour long Snyder cut, but. Uh, he was in, I know he was a big part of Supergirl, that TV show, but I kind of gave up on that oh. after a season or two, but he was a big part of that. He was kind of like, he had replaced the guy who was like leading the, the government organization that, uh, was, you know, dealing with Supergirl all the time, so. Well, that's something. Yeah, I just yeah, know him, uh, human guy. I would see him in those, uh, Justice League cartoons or whatever. Yeah. That's about all I know him from. But he always seems like a nice guy. I think he's like the vision. Like he re- visually and just kind of yeah. overall, they just kind of remind me of each other. That is a nice comparison. Yeah, like the, the emotionless voice the way they talk, just like yeah. matter of fact. Like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, before we get into the Martian Manhunter, let's remind everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. I believe we're up to 192 subscribers. We picked up a couple more. So uh, at the current pace, we're we're going to get to 500 any day now. We're just going <laughs> to jump up there to 500. But uh, we always appreciate the support. And those T-shirts are flying off the shelves. Merch.19books.com. <laughs> Get your flea market fantasy T-shirts. All right. So uh, anyway, uh, Martian Manhunter, this was a four-issue limited series. And, again, we're, we're going to go over his backstory. But with DC, you know, things change with the backstory. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, this fellow's real name is Jean Jean's. <laughs> J is John Jones, right? Oh, you know what? Yeah, I guess you could pronounce it as Jones. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's J apostrophe O N N, and then J apostrophe O N Z Z. So uh, John Johns is how I would do it because I'm like French. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then when, when he uh, masquerades, John, John Silvers, because even though he's a he's a Martian, you know, he's from Mars. He's a he's a green fella. But then when he's on Earth, he masquerades as a normal human, and then he he goes by the name of John Jones. Yeah, he's a detective, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Originally, I believe he was a um, – well, no, he probably wasn't a, an actual police detective because he would have had to go to the academy and everything. So he was probably always yeah. a private detective, I'm guessing. But, um, well, I mean, if they would take Bobcat Goldthwait in that police academy, I'm sure they true. would take uh, – <laughs> John Jones. <laughs> That's true. Oh, uh, yeah. His first appearance is Detective Comics 225 from 1955. I had no idea he dated all the way back to the 50s. Yeah, I, I would have thought that. That makes sense. Really? A lot of sci-fi going on in the, yeah, in the see, 50s. There it is. That's yeah. exactly it. The sci-fi stuff. And he was created by Joseph Samixon. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. And Joe Serta. Never heard of him in my life. But they're fat, the swell fellas. At least they got one claim to fame. They created the Martian Manhunter. More than I got. Oh, yeah. They probably have a lot more stuff we're just not aware of because we're dumb. And uh, he also adopted the identity of, like I said, Detective John Jones in Middletown, USA. God bless DC and their creative city <laughs> names. Oh, God. <laughs> Middletown, USA. I bet that's on the East Coast, Middletown. <laughs> 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 and he appeared in the backup story, The Strange Experiment of Dr. Ertl. And that's E R D E L Ertl, Doctor Saul Ertl. Yeah, he's the fellow we see in this book here. Um, yeah. Although, again, it's DC stories change because in the original, <laughs> yep. all right, here's what happened. I went back and I looked at this today. Uh, this Doctor Saul Ertl, he's a very old fella, like the classic old mad scientist. Well, he's not a mad scientist, but he's an old scientist guy, white mustache, you know, white hair, bald on top, and he he created this computer brain. And uh, this, this computer brain, apparently what it did was it yanked uh, Jean Jones, <laughs> Jean's out of <laughs> Mars and like just teleported him here, here to Earth. And he popped up looking exactly like he does 
as we always see him with like the cape and the he's a big buff green guy with a blue cape and a mm-hmm. little cross thing on his like uh, no shirt but just like uh, straps crossing on his chest right just enough to maybe cover his nipples <laughs> yeah so he looks like a hero though you know and that's how he popped yeah. up in his room there and uh he's like whoa where are you and he's like oh mom john jones i'm from mars you know and he's like hey <laughs> I uh your language very quickly i guess he probably <laughs> absorbed it out of his mind yeah he's, yeah i guess he's yeah this guy's a telepath as well this uh Martian Manhunter, but uh, now, didn't, the, isn't he also technically? I saw something that he was from. He's from the past, right? Like they, yeah, they actually yanked him out of time as well. They added that as well over the years. Yeah, but originally, okay. they they just plucked him off from Mars, and then he's like, "All right, hey Doc, I understand what you're doing because you know I'm a scientist back in my world too, and I know all this stuff. But uh, it was nice having a little visit with you. But how about you send me back to Mars?" And the doctor's like, "Hey, I I can't do that. This computer brain only goes one way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm gonna have to." Yeah. I would have to reprogram it to like. Uh, it took you know. me like sixty years to come up with this one, yes. so I don't have that much life left. Just one way traffic. Well, it's interesting you brought that up <laughs> because uh, I, then the uh, Marsh Manhunter is like, "Oh, you mean I'm stuck here?" And he's like, "Oh well, I guess I got better make the best of it." And he's like, "I, I should probably adapt uh, how I look." This all happens in the span of like eight panels. And he's like, "All right, well, yeah. I guess I got to make you the best of it." Gotta love those old school origins. Yeah. So I better adapt to this uh, new world of yours. So he changes into like a a, a white fella in a uh, classic business suit from the 50s, you know. And he's like, oh, look at me. I'm now a human man. And this Dr. Ertl, he gets so shocked at witnessing this. He has a heart attack and dies. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and as his last dying breath, he's like, oh, sorry there, Martian Manhunter. Uh, I didn't. I'm not going to be around to fix that brain. I guess you're stuck here. All right, see you. Bye. And he dies. And I brought and, you uh, here for a discovery that no one will ever know about because I, I'm taking the secret to my grave. So Martian Manhunter immediately he just goes and gets a job and starts living a life. <laughs> He's just living the life. <laughs> what a guy! <laughs> you gotta love that. Yeah. <laughs> He's, That's yeah. Much he wants to be a responsible citizen right away. He's gotta get a green no. card. He wants to vote. <laughs> Nowadays, uh, he's considered the last of his uh, his race because in uh, this here story today, they hint at it. But basically what happened is uh, some evil fellow on Mars, he released some disease. We'll just say, oh, the CIA and COVID-19. And the COVID-19 <laughs> wiped out everybody on Mars except for Martian Manhunter. Yeah. So he was the only last survivor. And then just then when he's like uh, everyone else on his planet is dying. And he's probably going to die next. Boom. That's when the Dr. Ertl's experiment plucked him out of Mars. And uh, yeah, I wonder if he rolled with it pretty easily. He's like, all right, this is better than imminent death. Yeah. yeah. But back in the original day in the Silver Age, that is not his backstory. He was not the last of the Martians. He just was taken from Mars. And, you know, so none of that stuff happened in the old days. <laughs> and he was actually a charter member of the Justice League. I had no idea. Yeah, I think I knew that. I'm going to put that. Oh, look at you just knowing everything about Martian Manhunter. <laughs> well, I just a big buried. brain on jank. <laughs> there was everything. But, uh, now, do you know why he was part of the Justice League originally? Uh, because reason. he was one of the characters they had the rights to. <laughs> no, they didn't want to put Superman and Batman in the Justice League because they thought they'd be overexposed. Now, companies never worry about that these days. But back then, oh. they actually thought about that. They're like, you know what? We don't want people to get sick of Superman. So let's not put Superman in the Justice League. Uh, let's come up with some. Oh, let's use that Martian Manhunter guy. Because he's basically very similar to Superman. He's strong, can fly. Yeah. And uh, although he can turn invisible and shapeshift and stuff like that. And he's a telephone. Yeah, he's pretty much got every ability known to man. So really, yeah. if this was like, if Cousin Brandon was here and he was writing That's that poem funny. again about who would you be, I think uh, oh, wow. the, the obvious answer is Martian Manhunter. <laughs> because okay. well, he's got all the power. I don't know if that's that obvious because he also has a really glaring weakness, though. Fire. You know? Yeah. Scared I mean, to fire. be fair, most of us are really yeah. weak to fire. I am, also, <laughs> I am also vulnerable to fire. Yeah. <laughs> but Superman, not vulnerable to fire. Uh, that's true. Yeah. So that's something. But I, I appreciate the cousin Brandon threw back to poetry. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't been on the show. Yeah, he hasn't been on the show in like two years. Uh, we got to get him back on here. Anyway. All right, so yeah, he was uh, an original member of Justice League because he was a fill-in for Superman. Do you know who the fill-in was for Batman? Ooh, Green Arrow? 
That's right. Holy hell. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> I figured. He pretty much rips off Batman in every way. He's even got an arrow cave, I think. <laughs> an arrow cave. So uh, in 1963, Martian Manhunter and Green Arrow started the team-up format for the Brave and the Bold with issue 50. So, uh, you know, we've read some of those Brave and the Bold where you got the two heroes teaming up. Manhunter yeah. and Green Arrow started that. Yeah, so that's oh, look at that. Hey, you didn't know that. How about that? So, uh, Martian Manhunter mm-hmm. trivia, Jake? Did it now. Copy something and after all. <laughs> his uh, John Jones persona got killed off in the pages of Detective Comics by the idol head of Diabolu. <laughs> Diabolu. <laughs> oh, boy. And that was an artifact that generates supernatural monsters. And I guess it killed off the uh, detective. Uh, but, you know, Martian Manhunter, he uh, he kept hunting them. Just to, so he lost he lost that identity. He just stayed as Martian Manhunter. And he started chasing after this uh, our idol head of Diabolu. And that happened in the pages of House of Mystery. He had, like, his individual mm-hmm. stories over there. So did he start a new identity, or he's just... Um, uh, he, he, like, they just gave up that. Like, he, he was no longer Clark Kent. He was just Superman all the time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then in 1968... Like it'd be easy to come up with a new one. <laughs> just change your name. You can change it to look like whatever you want. Yeah. In 1968, DC decided Superman could appear in Justice League. So they said, hey, Martian Man, I heard yeah, I probably, like, <laughs> falling behind. Maybe we should put so, the big names in here. His final appearance as part of, like, the team going on a mission was in issue 61. And then he popped up again in issue 71. His people from Mars came to Earth. And they said, hey, uh, John Jones, why don't you come back to Mars with us? And he said, okay. So he went back to Mars. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> but that Simpsons. Uh, <laughs> Guy yeah, goes back to his home planet. Yeah, Poochie. Poochie. <laughs> I have to return to my home planet. <laughs> yeah, Poochie had to go back. <laughs> and he became the uh, leader of New Mars. How about that? Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's Hopefully it worked out better than New Cope. <laughs> In New Mexico. All right, so anyway, <laughs> uh, he appeared sporadically over the next 15 years. Just occasional popping up here or there. And he returned to the Justice League full time in 1984, and he brought back his John Jones persona. So how about that? Hey, all right. That was probably a lot of paperwork to bring that guy back from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> his taxes <laughs> were probably a mess when he had to go back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was also a founding member of the uh, Justice League reboot in 1987. They like started things over. And I believe uh, the writers for the issue were doing, or the writer for today's issue is J.M. DeMatteis. And I believe he was also involved with that. Yeah, him and Keith Geffen. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's the Martian Manhunter backstory I have for you. Anything else uh, about Martian Manhunter you'd like to mention, Jack? Uh, I believe the, the the guy who uh, released this virus that uh, took out all the Martians, I believe that was his brother, right? Like his twin brother? Oh, sounds about <laughs> I sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> Because I guess uh, what I what I read before was that like uh, his brother was born without the ability to read minds like most Martians can do, so oh, he was kind okay. of surly about it. So he created a virus that would yes. you know kill anyone who tried to use their mind powers, and uh, basically it worked on the entire planet. <laughs> yeah, that is how they all died. They, their telepathic abilities like it went from one mind to the other. So what happened to the brother then? Did uh, John Jones kill him or? I don't know. I think he probably got teleported away before he could. Maybe. I'm sure they brought him back at some point. But then John Jones isn't the last of his race then. That's true. I mean, they must have had a battle later on. I couldn't see them just leave that out there. Even if they said it, they killed him, I'm sure they must have brought him back at some point. That's too juicy. Because I, I like to uh, listen to his audiobooks when I take naps. And I told you I, I listened to one. I think it's called Last Sons, where Lobo is going around trying to uh, he, yeah. he gets Martian Manhunter. And because someone hired him to... There's an arrest warrant out for him or something. <laughs> and John Jones is like, why am I being arrested? But all right, I'll go along with you because he's a law abiding guy, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, it was all just a thing because some alien brain or something was uh, yeah, gathering up. Something. Yeah. 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 So like Superman, there. Martian Manhunter, everyone is the last of their race. They're rounding them up. That's sure cool. are a lot of those going around DC. <laughs> yeah. Lobo is another one. Yeah. 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 So, all right. They realize their mistake of making like all of their heroes one of a race that's just yeah. as powerful as them. <laughs> I know. It is, <laughs> it is a flaw. 
So we mentioned J.M. DeMatteis. We've talked about him on the show many times. I believe mm-hmm. the first time we talked about him, he did a Ghost Rider issue way back in year one of this show. And from the 1970s. Uh, and then uh, he did a lot Gilbert. of Spider-Man stuff, right? Like Web, or was he doing Web? Or what was he doing? He was doing Spectacular for a good okay. while. Yeah, probably close to 10 years. And like you mentioned, the Justice League, I think he did write that one we did on here. Um, yeah. He also so wrote he, uh, all six parts of uh, Craven's Last Hunt. Oh, that's uh, right, yeah. Three different Spider-Man books, which, you know, is a, is a masterpiece, so. Yeah. I always loved his Spider-Man stuff. Uh, it was probably my favorite Spider-Man stuff from that era. So that was kind of the one time where Spectacular overtook Amazing for me, where it's just like, this stuff's good. <laughs> this guy's writing good stuff. <laughs> And the artist here is a fellow named Mark Badger, who we've never discussed on here. And maybe we'll save him till the end because uh, one of us really liked the art in this book. Yeah. And one of us Opinions did Opinions will vary. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. All right, Jack, would you like to describe the cover for us? <laughs> would that I could. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, we got the DC little corner box up there. New format. I don't know what the new format is exactly, but the Martian Manhunter logo is pretty cool. It's got a lot of like spires, I guess you would call them. Uh, interesting enough. Then it says four issue miniseries by J.M. DeMatteis and Mark Badger, putting the uh, the authors and the the artists right there on the cover. That's nice. Um, and then we've got Martian Manhunter, I guess. <laughs> what do you mean you guess? <laughs> how, how do you not know that's right? Everything just kind of looks like blobs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's, he's punching some kind of spirit thing that's floating in the sky uh, with an evil looking mouth. Um, and you got Booster Gold there on the floor looking dazed. Batman on the floor looking like a dope yeah. and all dazed. Yeah. Um, love got love Blue it. Beetle's foot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I love the, this uh, depiction of Martian Manor. I love the angles and the sharp lines. But my favorite part of the cover is that bottom left there, Batman, just looking like a dope. Just <laughs> not stars going around his head. <laughs> I'm a big dope. Like yeah. Martian Manhunter's back leg. What's going on there? It doesn't What's even look thing? like a leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's just art. You know, it's, an, it's an impressionistic style. Very sketchy, very yeah. loose. You know, very. But I, uh, <laughs> it's weird because it's very tight. The lines, uh, sharp lines, angles, and stuff. So I love that. But yeah, it is loose at the same time. So uh, I, uh, I don't know. I'm a big fan of it. Big fan of it. And the colors on it are spectacular too. All the purples and yellows and uh, green. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Big fan of this. So uh, yeah, big thumbs up for me on this cover, Jake. Not so much. <laughs> yeah, not so much. It's a fine line because, like, I don't know what separates certain things that are very impressionistic, like Bill Sienkiewicz or even like early Jay Lee from something like this or like Larry Stroman, who I really didn't like when he was doing X Factor. or Also, probably like Duncan Rolo or Rolau. I forget. I don't know how you pronounce it, but he was yeah, another X Factor artist that eventually that I, I often cite as my least favorite artist of all time because it just looks oh, wow. like garbage. <laughs> But yeah. no offense to him. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but <laughs> I did not like his work at all. Yeah, see, I like this. This is good stuff to me. All right, so we open it up and we see uh, DCI with Johnny DC. DC, that's like their little uh, news bulletin or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Um, like the Marvel bullpen uh, for DC, I guess. Is there a need of Bullpen scoops? bulletin. Bullpen bulletin. Isn't that what they call it in Marvel or they share that stuff? Yeah, anyway. fans. Bulletin board or whatever. Stands bullpen. All right. So now we open it up and we see uh, a splash page with like some uh, big monstrous face in the background. Uh, although I think that's Martian Manhunter flipping out, though. But he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Listen, yeah, I, I can see that there are many times in this book <laughs> where I have no idea what the hell's happening. Exactly. But I just go for the ride. And it was fun. <laughs> the color. He also did the coloring here. Uh, this Mark Badger fellow. And I think the colors in this book are great. So, um, but we see like uh, on top of that background, we see just an image of uh, some people running around. I don't know. It looks like they're uh, at a museum or something. And uh, yeah. Then the next page, we see a bunch of panels of a, of a fella and he's kind of flipping out. And he's like, what's wrong with me? I guess the Martian Manhunter in a previous annual Injustice League, there was some sort of alien spore and uh, Dr. Fate, 
and them uh, were worried that this spore could infect uh, all of the Earth, so they had to contain it somehow. So, like, hey, Martian Manhunter, you're one of the alien guys. Why don't we just put it in your body? That'll be a way to yeah. contain it. No bad can come of this. Yeah, so he uh, he ingested the spore to protect everybody else, I guess. And now on this issue, it's starting to flip them out. He's starting to have – well, this is issue two, of course. But in issue one, yeah. he, started, <laughs> sure where he, he one. starts having, like, hallucinations and whatnot, and he thinks he's losing his mind. He's going – and and one of the reasons why he thinks he's losing his mind is he keeps seeing this like a demonic image of this like black creature, um, just a demon looking thing. And uh I man, I, I should have wrote down his name. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, but, it was like Ron Mir or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And, and he's like a um, a lot of extra letters in there. He's basically like a mythical creature of Mars. Like he's he's kinda like their uh um well, like Lady Death or something like uh, he governs the hmm. death realm or Hela, I guess you would say or whatever. Um, I guess I was confused because I saw that the virus was named like Haran Mirrors. Yeah. So is this? Well, that's why the they virus? named. <laughs> that's why or, they named the virus yeah, is, because okay. he's like the bringer of death. He's like the Grim Reaper basically on Mars. So okay. they, that's why they named the virus because it's killing everybody. Like he's the Grim Reaper or whatever. So, that makes uh, sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's who that guy is. So he thinks he's seeing this uh, Mars Grim Reaper on Earth, and he's like, I got to be losing my mind. So he keeps flipping out, and we see him. He's at this museum because this museum has a display set up to mimic Mars, and he is being pulled, like called to this his his uh, Mars origins. So he goes to the museum because he wants to hang out on Mars. Sometimes I do that to the zoo with the chimps. <laughs> I go hang out with the chimps. <laughs> Like, yeah. yeah. You need inspiration <laughs> for your book. <laughs> Come back to my brother. Be with your family. <laughs> so but apparently in this in the DC universe people know a lot more about Mars. <laughs> Cuz if we just made, you know, we don't know well, anything about civilizations on Mars. These people seem to have made a whole museum about the different uh civilizations going on up there. Well, I think it's just a, a rocky uh you know, the red planet and whatnot. They just have a room full of red dirt. <laughs> like, hey, it's Mars. <laughs> yeah. That. Now pay pay forty five ninety five to get in. See this red dirt. <laughs> so we see him. He's in his John Jones uh, human form here. And uh, then that demon guy, again, I can't remember what his name is. You said it before. I can't remember. We'll just call him Jimmy. We'll just call him Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> so Jimmy from Mars. He may, he starts making uh, John Jones burn, and uh, mm-hmm. he's like, "We're gonna make you burn," and he burns this off. This is his... basically the entire issue. You can pretty much just summarize yeah. the whole thing and by saying <laughs> inner turmoil. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's, there's not, <laughs> and yeah, there's not much going on here in this book. Uh, so he burns away his human form because he says, "You know, you remember who you are. You know, you're a Martian. You're not some human." Yeah. So, uh, and again, Martian Manhunter thinks he's just imagining all this because of that alien spore thing in his belly. He thinks he's having these hallucinations and flipping out and losing his mind. And then we get a page of uh, him in kind of like his true alien form where it's just a bunch of green mess. Just like, <laughs> I don't know. Just, uh, yeah, he's just kind of silly puttied out. Yeah. It's green. Oh, I guess yeah. this is called Burning Bright. Look at that. Here's where the art, I, I feel like, lets you down, because even when he's drawing normal people, they look pretty hideous. So <laughs> when this one looks actually hideous, there's not much of a difference. Listen, I, I hear your complaints, <laughs> and they are valid. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> but I still enjoyed it. All right, so, uh, but he's on his, Mar- he's at this Martian thing. Now he's just a big green guy, like, uh, he's all spindly, and like you said, silly putty-ish, and He's imagining this uh, Mars landscape in the museum as like what it was at home on his home planet. And he's having flashbacks. Like over there, that's where I lost my virginity. <laughs> this is basically just like a real bad acid trip here for a uh, Martian man on Earth. He's yeah. flashbacks. Well, and things that, it was invented in the, in the 50s, so I'm sure he went to Woodstock and, <laughs> you know, catching up with him. So, but eventually he fights back because that guy keeps a uh, mean mouth him and stuff, that demon guy. And he says, you know what? No, look at me. And he forms now. He, he reshapes himself into his traditional Martian Manhunter look. And he punches that demon fella. And he starts flipping him over and uh, tosses him away. And they start fighting. And there's a big punch. Boom. And then, uh, I don't know. 
Then he just jumps out of the museum. And apparently Batman and Blue Beetle from the previous issue, they're out looking for John. I'm going to call him John Jones. <laughs> yeah. Jones. I like Jones better. But uh, they're out looking for him. So they see him bust out through the museum. They're like, oh, there he is. There's the Martian Manhunter. We have yep. to go uh, collect them, you know, because they know something's <laughs> going on. Something's going on there. Yeah, um, clearly he just keeps, you know erupting and like flying away and they'll stop for two seconds and then fly away. And yeah, I think in issue one, he may have even like cold cock Batman. So right away, he's my favorite. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Creep. And then we get an ad for action comics, uh, remodeling in progress. There's a lot of uh, interesting ads in this book for other DC books. And we will discuss them as we'll have to be. Yeah. We'll have to be doing in the future i'm definitely curious what this remodeling in progress was about <laughs> this is before like the death of superman so what was the big uh remodel at this time i just put up some new siding on the house <laughs> you got a new hat <laughs> <laughs> so now we cut away from the martian manhunter and we just see some dude in a cabin up in some snowy uh, wilderness somewhere and uh, he's got a cat named miles like our buddy miles <laughs> oh. yeah. look at that i wonder if that cat's a raconteur like Miles Watson. <laughs> that cat probably got eaten by Alf, which would be Miles Watson's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, this guy here in this book, this is Dr. Ertle. We don't know that right away. Um, yeah, he just seems like a crazy stalker at this point. Just like, yes. oh, man, I bet Martian Manhunter's coming. He's got like a he's whole got all these all clippings. And, yeah, he's got all these newspaper <laughs> yeah. clippings of Martian Manhunter. <laughs> There's like a picture of Martian Manhunter that he photoshopped the undies <laughs> off. You're like, oh, boy, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> it's like me with Oscar. That's what this guy <laughs> uses, Marshall Manor. But uh, he looks nothing like Dr. Ertle from the 1955 book. Like, like he's an older fellow, but he's got like a buzz cut, crew cut situation going yeah. on. And uh, He apparently spent all these interviews years developing a new hair growth serum. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We should yeah. share that with me. <laughs> so, because in this version, they just said, oh, you know what? Dr. Ertle didn't die. He faked his death. <laughs> because he knew that uh, Martian Manhunter would never be able to live a full life on Earth if he was, st- I don't know what the explanation was, but he just faked his death. Yeah, there was something about, I believe it's something to do with, he didn't want Martian Manhunter to know about his tragic past and everyone dying because, so he just kind of made up this whole, oh, oh you were a superhero the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and I think by the end of the series, like, that's when Martian Manhunter learns the truth, and he's kind of, like, okay with it. He's just like, yeah, you know, I like being who I am, but now that I know about my past, I can put it all behind me and go ahead happier than ever. Yeah. So old John Jones is uh, flying around, and he, he's being drawn toward that cabin, I guess? Or, I don't know, he's just flying? Yes, toward... yeah. But well, It uh, seems like he ends up there by random later yes. on, but I don't know. It's very confusing. <laughs> I seem to and know then, he was coming. And there's a nice shot of the background. There's uh, some foxy green ladies. <laughs> I don't know. And then there's a lot of oranges <laughs> and purples. But he's he's thinking back to his days on Mars again. And then he snaps yeah. out of it. And uh, he crashes down into uh, the earth there. And he starts flipping out. He starts like uh, going back to silly putty-ish. His body starts getting wonky again. But yep. Then Got tentacles he, on his head. But then he focuses and... Gets back to his normal body. And now we have an ad here, Jank, for uh, Manhunter. That's right. By John Ostrander, Kim Vale, Doug Rice, Sam Keith. A new monthly series starting in March. And if you cut out this coupon, you get a free mask. Yeah. Oh, man. I hope we can still get that. Yeah. Free mask. <laughs> now, do you think it's weird that you have a book called Martian Manhunter? And they have a book called Manhunter. <laughs> Yeah, I believe that whole Millennium event, which maybe we should do one day as well, was like a, you know, limited series, big event comic, had something to do with there was like a bunch of these Manhunters and a lot of them had like infiltrated, you know, all the the DC books in one way or another. Like a lot of the side characters turns out were Manhunters in disguise, almost like the Skrull secret invasion type thing. I think you can probably see where this is going, but I just had had an idea. Chimp Hunter. (laughs) 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 all right so we turn the page and there's uh 
John Jones, he's out in the woods. Now he's got underpants on, so that's nice. He's covering up his uh, his bits because he was naked <laughs> yeah. there for a while. But um, that demon guy's right on top of him again, and he yeah. starts tormenting. Even though he flew away into the woods, and they're still he's still trying to fight him. And uh, you know, I think what Martian Manhunter does is pick up a tree and try to squash yeah. him with it. But I don't know. <laughs> just <laughs> again, just hard go to tell. for it. Just enjoy the ride, man. Just enjoy the ride. <laughs> Don't try to make too much sense of it. <laughs> and um, he thinks he's won, you know, but that, that demon pops back up again. He's like, oh, man. <laughs> Stinking demon. So uh, he's like yelling at him and screaming. And they're fighting and yeah. stuff. He apparently has a sonic scream, I guess, where he, he unleashes that. And again, this guy just has every power you could possibly think of. <laughs> So he starts running again from him. He flies away again. And this time he, like, crashes into, like, I don't know. Is it a shopping mall or? Well, yeah. Something like that. He just flies into it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's, like, yeah. a Grand Central Station type thing. Mm, I don't something. Know. But he's having more flashbacks to, like, Mars and everything's burning and dying and stuff. So then he, he flies away again and he goes out into space. And he's yeah. just uh, drifting along space in the space. No more, no more. And who finds him up in space there, Jack? <laughs> why batman and blue beetle and booster gold they apparently mm-hmm. they turn their ship into a, a spaceship now and they're able to just grab them with like a skill crane claw and uh <laughs> they want themselves a martian manhunter <laughs> <laughs> that's right they pluck them right out of the sky <laughs> and mr miracle's also there oh know? yeah it's true mr. can't Man. forget him yeah so they just uh yank him out of the old toy machine with a little crane and they take <laughs> him back to earth and now we cut back yep. and we see that Dr. Ertle again uh, for one panel. And he's like, oh, he's coming. I can tell, Miles. Martian man. I'm waiting for you, my Martian yeah. friend. I'm waiting. I'm <laughs> waiting. <laughs> and now we could, they go to some embassy because uh, I can't remember. Was this in Italy? I can't remember where they were. But um, yeah, they, yeah, they're in Italy. And I don't know why they, they needed to go to an embassy because apparently this machine must be on the ship. There's no way the embassy yeah. just had this machine that they're using on the Martian Manhunter. Yeah, I didn't understand <laughs> that either. <laughs> but, um, so, all right, so they hook him up to some machine, and I don't know what they're trying to do to him. Uh, just trying to calm him down, you know? Make him, hey, yeah, trying to get, trying like to get that that they're him. <laughs> him. Yeah, yeah. trying to get that score out of him, I think. Anyway, the, the, now we get an ad for The Wanderers. Now, this book seems interesting. I almost picked this yeah. book for this week. By Doug Mensch, Dave Hoover, and Robert Campanella. And now it sounds pretty awesome because here's the tagline here. The Wanderers, reborn to solve the final mystery, who killed them? So that's yeah, something. That's the tagline, yeah. So I guess checking out. the premise here is they are all murdered, and then they were cloned and brought back to life. And now they have to solve their murder. Is, yeah, I guess, like that. I had never heard now, of it. Hopefully one of them was a chimp and he was yeah. trying to solve the mystery, but, <laughs> you know, we chimp. can't have everything. <laughs> but I'd never heard of this book. Me neither. It always blows my mind when you come across these books I've never heard of. Why are you been <laughs> passing? I feel like with DC, there's a lot yeah. more of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, look, there's a special bonus. If you subscribe to Wanderers Now, receive issue one signed by writer Doug Mensch. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Send fifteen dollars for fourteen issues by March first, nineteen eighty eight, and you are guaranteed to receive re- receive issues one, two, and three together in one package. Holy hell! Now, what do you think the odds are this made it fourteen issues? <laughs> I think uh, twelve. I think is what it was, or less than that. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say probably not great. So yeah, we'll check out the Wanderers maybe at some point. Yeah, I would like to. That sounds pretty good. <clears throat> All right, so now we're uh, inside this embassy in Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. And, again, I, I can't stand these two guys. Yeah, um, they're pretty incessant. Mike, Mike Gale made me read these years ago. They're the worst. But they're at this embassy, and uh, uh, Booster Gold's like, hey, we're in Italy. Uh, Italian women are smoking hot. See you later, Blue Beetle. And he's going to go have <laughs> some fun. But uh, Blue Beetle's worried about John Jones, you know. But here that little demon guy shows up again. And he just flicks Blue Beetle in the face with a finger and knocks him out. And then uh, mm-hmm. Booster Gold wants to go fight the demon. He just jumps right through him and crashes into the wall, knocks himself out. So probably not the best idea. Boy, embassy's not going to be happy about that. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, this next guy, I had no idea who this was. Yeah, <laughs> not a clue. It kind of reminds <laughs> me of Fox or maybe the Crimson Dynamo a little bit because he seems yeah. to be Russian. Yeah, his name um, is uh, Rocket Red. This is the Red Rocket. Which has a very, <laughs> that would different, be a very different comic. <laughs> he's Rocket Red, and I guess he's basically yeah, just like Crimson Dynamo, like Russian Iron Man, is basically what he is. Yeah. I had no idea he existed, but I had to read up on him there to see who he was. But yeah, man, hard to believe Justice League wasn't popular. Beast or Gold, Blue Beetle, <laughs> Rocket Red. Yeah, yikes. So he's start, he's walking around the embassy because Batman told him to go look for uh, something because so, like someone's gonna he says someone's hunting the Manhunter. <laughs> You'll know it when you see it. You know, just go look around the embassy, make sure no one's in here. You'll know but when I you see it. Do not understand the American <laughs> psyche, and Batman's least of all. Perhaps if I watched more episodes of Father Knows Best. <laughs> <laughs> man, man of a thousand voices, Kevin James. <laughs> this is Russian voice now. Yeah. And is it gets. He's walking along and uh, he gets uh, the floor starts melting beneath him. And he gets sucked into the floor and it's that demon guy. Why don't you know it? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, this panel here, I had no idea what's going on. <laughs> but that demon nope. guy, <laughs> he melts the weapons on uh, Red Rockets or Rocket Red or whatever on his <laughs> outfit, and uh, so he can't shoot him and he's just stuck in the floor and. Uh, there's an alarm going off, and Batman's like, hey, and Martian Manhunter's like, oh, he's here. That guy's here. He starts yep. to wake up, and he's like, oh, he's here. And Batman's like, oh, hey, look, he's waking up. Hey, uh, Mr. Miracle, I will you take this. care of uh, John Jones? Yeah, I'll go beat up this <laughs> alien guy, whatever he is, because I'm Batman. Yep. I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm the goddamn Batman. <laughs> and he says, hey, hey, you uh, evil demon guy, stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the demon guy says, hey, I don't want to cause you any trouble there, Batman. And he's like, uh, you have a peculiar way of showing it. And uh, wh- wh- what would you do for this demon voice, Jack? How would you? Uh, <laughs> uh, I am Ron Mir. What is it? <laughs> you cannot understand me or my ways. Will you stand <laughs> aside? That's pretty good. And uh, Batman doesn't move, you know, because he's Batman. He's a big jerk. So uh, <laughs> the demon fella just backhands him, <laughs> bitch yeah. slaps him, knocks him unconscious. <laughs> Boom. And. Uh, Oh, John Jones is young. See that. <laughs> I <laughs> love like... it. I'm going to get this blown <laughs> up and put it on my wall. And he says, uh, Batman, he's screaming. And uh, there's another ad here for DC. You can buy books, but this is weird, man. I don't know. What is this? Which type are you? Take the yeah, Action yeah. Comics weekly subscription quiz. Like, are you a bagger and boarder, or are you just, like, tearing the shit apart? Because <laughs> it's DC. And you're like, this is crap. Why did I spend or, money on this? Or type three doesn't believe in weekly comics, doesn't believe in Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, or the Tooth Fairy, believes clip-on bow ties will be the next fashion or age. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like type three is right. So Mr. Miracle's talking to Martian Manhunter. He's like, hey, what's going on? And Manhunter's like, oh, yeah, Batman's been KO'd. He's been knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Miracle's like, no, uh there can't be. Like, Batman can <laughs> handle it. There's nothing Batman can't handle. <laughs> yeah. He got knocked out, and uh, he's like, hey, that guy's going to be here. And sure enough, boom, that demon pops through the door, and he's like, oh, I am Heronmir, god of light and life, a.k.a. Jimmy. And you, and you Scott Free, <laughs> that is the worst name ever, Scott Free. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. Come he's on, Jack skate Kirby. Artist. They named him Scott Free, get it? Oh. <laughs> it's just awful. <laughs> So the demon guy's talking to him, and uh, I don't know, would you, is it going to hurt your vocal cords to do more demon voice? (laughs) Well, this is where the demon, like, sings a song, apparently, and uh, Uh, Scott Free is so entranced by it, that he's like, okay, you can have Martian Manhunter. (laughs) Well, he doesn't really, technically, he says, uh, doesn't he make up mind link or something, and and he goes, hear my my Mars song, or whatever. Yeah, let it hear my song. But we don't see him actually. (laughs) Yep. It's like a metaphor, I guess, for his inner belief of uh, what his mission is. And uh, Mr. Something Miracle. Mr. Miracle sees in this song or this mind link, tells him that, oh, I guess I do have to let, you know, let, let him take Martian yeah. Manhunter. Yeah. He like here, it looks like he's betraying Martian Manhunter. Like he's like, oh, this guy's I don't want to mess with this guy. Go ahead and take him. 
you know, go ahead, demon guy, take my buddy Martian Manhunter. I'm not going to stop you because I'm a big wimp. That's not really what's going on, as we learn later. Uh, Mr. Miracle, he sensed the true mission of what this demon fellow was doing. And he said, oh, you know what? Yeah, he needs to go with you. So, uh, but Martian Manhunter doesn't know this at the time. He thinks Mr. Miracle betrayed him. So he gets real mad and he tries to punch uh, a demon guy again. And he just goes flying out of Italy up into space. And then he lands down in that uh, wintry wilderness where that Dr. Ertl's cabin is right outside his door. <laughs> Dr. Ertl knew he'd be showing he's up. right all along. Yeah, he showed up. And he's kind of like uh, smoldering and whatnot. And his body's still like uh, a little twitchy. And, uh, and you want to see a twitchy Dr. body. Pants probably won't be for long if Dr. Ertl has his way. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to see a twitchy body, look at Dr. Ertl running out that door. That's a twitchy <laughs> body. Look at that arm. All right, but anyway. Um, he says, hey, hey, John Jones, you're, you're back. You're here. And, and, uh, John Jones says, hey, Ertl, you're dead. You're <laughs> dead. And you're like, nah, I'm still here. Don't worry, buddy. And then on the final panel, uh, the big, uh, alien, uh, or Mars demon guy pops up. And, uh, he's like, no, Dr. Ertl, not home. Oh, yeah, cause he said, you're home now, John. You're home with me. And he says, and the demon says, no, Dr. Ertl, not home yet, but soon, very soon. And next issue, yeah. the truth. Dun, dun. Yeah. Hey, but then if you turn the page there, then uh, look at that Power Girl. We read that. Yeah. Sure looks a lot more exciting here than, yeah. than the actual book was. <laughs> <laughs> they don't mention, you know, get to watch like 12 pages of her going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next page, Ming the Merciless invites you to visit Scenic Mungo. And it's a Flash Gordon comic book, Jank, based on the movie. Yeah. Look at that. I had no idea this existed either. Uh, Dan Jurgens wrote it. How about that? So yeah, I don't I know don't... if I knew that, but I, I, I would just, it's one of those things I would assume that why wouldn't you make a comic of it? Yeah, I'm going to mind checking that out. And then uh, turn the page again, and we oh, have yeah, the, the Crimson yeah. Avenger. Never heard of this Very guy either. He just looks like a oh. rip off of the spirit of the shadow yep. to combined into one. <laughs> like an old school 40 superhero from out of the shadows of time steps the Crimson Avenger. And Danger, action, intrigue. This thing's got it all. <laughs> DC's first masked hero battles crime, corruption, and the Nazi menace in a four chapter serial. Roy and Dan Thomas. Roy Thomas and his wife? Holy hell. And uh, Greg Book, Greg Brooks, but uh, uh, Roy Thomas right in the Crimson Avenger. We might have to check that out as well. Yeah, um, never heard of him either. So then we get wow. another ad for the Wanderers. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I didn't even go that far. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, they're really pushing these Wanderers. There's a character named uh, Dartalon. Mastery of personal combat. He looks like uh, Beast Man from. Uh, <laughs> yes, very much so. Yeah. Uh, Profile. Uh, <laughs> His profile is self pity. <laughs> oh yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> but uh, self pity turned to resentment and aggression. That's uh, that uh, Beast Man guy's profile. <laughs> so, sounds like <laughs> our buddy he Larry. A grotesque monster. He often thinks and behaves as one. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, oh, the lady's profile, dangerously unstable, often reflecting an unpredictable meld of other minds within her reach. Wow, how about that? Hmm. Yeah, that, yeah, this well, book does sound interesting. And uh, another ad, uh, two free issues of DC Comics. Man, they're really pushing the comics hard. Nine books for 75 yeah. cents a book. That must be the new format that the cover was promising. Like, now with way more ads. And then finally, we get an ad for The Killing Joke. Oh, yeah. What a great ad. <laughs> Makes me want to go read it again. <laughs> so, all right. Um, there it is. Martian Manhunter. Now, yeah. what'd you think? Uh, let's just talk about the writing here. Uh, J.M. DeMatheus, he's trying to do some uh, fancy stuff here. This isn't a traditional comic book. It, this is kind of like... Um, in the 80s, it seemed like once, you know, this is very, once Alan Moore came in and they started trying to do, everyone was trying to be Alan Moore. 
This is like an Alan Moore kind of story, I would say. I don't yeah, know. I could see that very much so. This yeah. uh, this felt uh, kind of like the other DC miniseries we've done recently, like, like Power Girl and The Demon. Uh, we might have picked the wrong issue <laughs> because <laughs> well, well, actually, not much happens. Well, they're all kind of like this. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> not a lot goes on in any of them. It's really just him. Yeah. Him having a lot of internal conflict coming to grips with the fact that he's a Martian. And, uh, right. Yeah, I mean, at least once I guess he finds out what happens, that might be interesting. But uh, as of him just, you know, freaking out, flying away, freaking out, flying away, freaking out, flying away, that's not the most interesting of stories. Um, no. Since it's, not, it's just kind of teasing things without really giving you anything, like, to go off of. It's not like, oh, there are some really juicy morsels here. It was just like, I don't know, pain, fire. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's basically a lot of that for all four issues. But, uh, yeah, so it's not a classic comic book where, you know, action scene, punch them up, action scene, uh, you know, yeah. good guy, whatever. But anyway, um, it was fine. Yeah, the writing was solid, you know, in terms of, but, uh, again, it's it's more, they're going for more highbrow stuff here, not uh, fancy writing instead of just telling a good story. But yeah. uh, what can you do? Yeah, it's it's no Craven's Last Hunt, like where the literary allusions are are a lot more relevant and you know feel earned. Whereas here it's just kind of like ah, uh, I don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> now the art, uh, a fellow named Mark Badger. He is not, in fact, a badger. He is. He, is oh. human. he was <laughs> born in 1958. He was one of the early adopters of uh, digital tools to create comics. He's also a political activist. This Mark Badger guy is. How about that? But his first professional work was coloring an eight-page story in Alien Legion issue three for Epic Comics in 1984. His first cover was for Incredible Hulk 303 in 1985. You probably love that, Jank, huh? Yeah. Sure. And uh, his first major work as both a penciler and inker was the four-issue The Gargoyle limited series in 1985. I never heard of that either. Do you know what The Gargoyle was? No. I mean, I know I the gargoyles from the 90s cartoon. And I know the gray gargoyle from. Uh, like, yeah, I yeah. love the gray gargoyle. He's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, 1985, I believe this is Marvel, too. So I don't know what that is. We'll have to look that up. But he did, he also did that with J.M. DeMatteis, and they've done many collaborations over the years, uh, the two of them. And he did painted artwork for the Marvel graphic novel Greenberg the Vampire in 1986. <laughs> Greenberg <laughs> the Vampire? <laughs> <laughs> never heard of that uh, huh is he like a like a vampire accountant <laughs> that's, what, that's what it sounds like <laughs> yeah and that was also written by jm de Mateus. so yeah these guys oh. have quite the collaboration going and over the years he also worked on uh dr strange power pack the specter the shadow strikes and uh, american flag after howard oh. came, yeah he came yeah. in started doing some there so, uh, yeah, I'm get, I would ask you what else you know about Mark Badger. I'm guessing it's nothing. You know nothing else. <laughs> oh, no, this is my first experience with, uh, with the Mark Badger. Yeah. And like I said, uh, all your critiques are actually valid. And a lot of the panels in here, I have no idea what the hell's going on, but I still <laughs> really enjoyed it. it. It seemed like they, he was going for a certain style and I bought in, you did it and I, I liked it. And I, I, like I said, I really like the coloring in this issue. Uh, a lot of purples and oranges and stuff like that. So, uh. Sure, but, I can kind of see that. Yeah, it was kind of like, uh, Coyote almost with the color scheme. Yeah, if you open this book up and you don't like the style immediately, you're not going to like it. But if it yeah. resonates with you in some way, you'll love it. So, but very loose, very sketchy. Just have fun. But, um. <laughs> I guess I'd like it because you don't see a lot. You don't see this style too many times, I don't think. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen people do this, and they're usually not my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> but in 88, you know, like back in our, yeah. the Bronze Age. I don't know. I saw too much of it back then. But uh, I enjoyed it. Check, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> yep. Not not the biggest fan of the art here. Um I think I mentioned last week, this is why I didn't pick this book sooner. <laughs> like it, it kind of kept coming up on my list, and I was like, eh, maybe not yet. So you had all these <laughs> books I wanted to pick from, and I picked this specifically because I wanted to see the art. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> right, cool. 
Uh, all right, so I'm guessing we're going to have different scores on this. So. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, what do you um, think? Sir? I think I would go with about a four. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't really like the art. The writing wasn't bad, but there also wasn't a lot happening. Um, it, it, if I was just picking this up, would it make me want to read more of it? Not really, no. <laughs> um, would, I mean, it didn't turn me off to learn more about the, the Martian Manhunter, but it also didn't stoke that fire or any, I would say. Well, I uh, guess I should say that the, the point of this demon fellow is Harmonier or whatever his name is, Jimmy. He uh, he's coming to Mars because when, like you mentioned, now he, uh, Martian Manhunter is plucked through uh, space and time. So he's actually like thou- his Mars all died like thousand a thousand years ago or something. Mm. And um, that whole time, since he was the last of the Martians, and they had that telep- telepathic uh, connection, because he got yanked away. For some reason, all the other souls of the dead Martians couldn't find peace because they're still <laughs> tethered to the Martian Manhunter guy. Really? So that's why the demon, he finally tracked him down after all these years, tracked him down to Earth. And uh, Jimmy comes to Earth to get Martian Manhunter because he has to bring him back to Mars. And they have to do some ceremony or something where he untethers the dead souls and all the dead Martians can now go to the afterlife. Jeez, after a thousand years, I'd be pretty pissed. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, ghosts, they don't keep a watch. They don't know what time it is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it's basically he wants to, he needs to go back home to send all these ghosts to the afterlife and so they can have peace, including his wife and daughter, I guess. So. I guess that's nice. Yeah. Um, so that's why Mr. Miracle left him, uh, let that guy take. John Jones, because he's like, oh, yeah, he's trying to do the right thing here. I sense that he's trying to do the right thing. So, yeah, so uh, Martian Manhunter goes back to Mars, and he gets his uh, his real body form. Like, the big muscular jack dude isn't really what he's supposed to look like. He's kind of like a spindly, almost like a praying mantis kind of looking guy. Okay. And uh, so, like, in issue three, that he gets that form, and then he's, like, in that form for most of issue four. And then when he comes, then he comes back from Mars. And he's at peace now because he knows who he is. He knows his history and he's no longer haunted by those ghosts or images or, you know, whatever he was going through in this issue. And um, he's still in that weird form. And Batman's like, I guess this is going to take some getting used to, you know, you and your new form there. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I guess so. And then, like, I looked at what the, his next issue is. And his, the next issue he appears in is just Justice League. So I'm like, oh, I'll see you. But he looks like in there, and he's back to his normal jacked, hulking self. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real long-lasting changes. That's what you like to see. Then I read something like he keeps that form just in private. Like if he's just chilling at the house. Yeah. He, I mean, if you're a like, shapeshifter, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Like so when he's just, out fighting crime, he's the big buff guy. So Yeah. Yeah, like, it always never made sense to me in, like, the X-Men movies where, the, like, Mystique has all these weird ridges all over her. Like, if you're a shapeshifter, the first thing you do is get rid of those. <laughs> Blue skin's fine, but who wants Maybe to Maybe that's like how she feels the most natural, though, you know? Like, that's her natural form. I don't know. I guess. So, anyway, that's uh, the whole point of this miniseries was to him uh, to come to peace with his history and everything. And, uh... Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's a, a lofty ambition that I probably could have done in two issues. Or yeah. Maybe, maybe one issue. Not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. All right. So there is, um, I'll probably, I'll go seven on this. Um, okay. Yeah. Not a lot happens in this, you know, but I did really enjoy the art and, uh, you know, yeah, I like it. my is varied. <laughs> yeah. That's the big difference between us here. Um, but, uh, I enjoyed it. I like looking at it. So, uh, all right, there it is. Martian Manhunter, issue two from uh, 1988. All right, Jake. So next week, I hear tell that Cousin Pete is going to be here. That is that is the case. Yes, I turned my pick over to him. Uh, I, I told him you pick anything he wants from the 70s and 80s. Um, I did not pull a cousin, you know, or a Mike L on it and try to be like, oh, but it has to also be Batman. <laughs> yeah, Mike L would always tell people, hey, you can pick whatever you want, but uh, maybe Batman, like uh, issue yeah. 300, whatever. Can you do that? He's like, oh, sure. 
do that. <laughs> like Jedi mind trick him into thinking, you know. No, no, he picked this all himself, and uh, boy, did he find us a doozy. Uh, <laughs> it's not anything I, I was expecting at all. I was thinking maybe he'd pick the Flash or something like that, but no, no, no. Uh, so next week's pick's going to be Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. Oh, nice. <laughs> number 106 from 1970. Oh, 1970. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Just look at the cover and you'll see why this will be special. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, well, looking at it. Uh, you said uh, 106. 106. Yeah. Right. Let's see. I'm typing it into my <laughs> Google machine. Superman. Girlfriend. Lane. 106. <laughs> and... National Museum of uh has apparently got all kinds of weird Kryptonian technology at his fingertips. <laughs> he turns those black. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is like a black like me situation going on here. And right on the cover it says I am curious black. Parentheses black. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, <laughs> So this will be this will be an interesting read for sure. <laughs> yeah, Lois goes into a little machine. Superman turns it on. She comes out. Now she's a black lady, and she says, "It's important that I live the next twenty four hours as a black woman." So <laughs> yeah, this is like a whole uh, black like me thing. Um, all right, yeah. this will be interesting. I hope we don't cancel. <laughs> I know. We probably will. This might be the last episode of uh, Flea Market Fantasy next week. This will be something exciting. <laughs> Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, issue 106 from 1970. Uh, it seems we've been doing a lot of 80s books. I like the 70s the best, you know, and uh, I got to get back. <laughs> definitely 70s. didn't care back then, for sure. And we're just throwing <laughs> shit at the wall and see what sticks. Sorry, that's next week. Cousin Pete will be here twice the janks next week here on Flea Market Fantasy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's something. And until then, again, if you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe. But don't get any jank on you.